Do you want to tell us which uh, which one are the most incredible experience you passed through this year? And also if you got into some troubles. You can still have good conversations even if you disagree. Absolutely, but we can uh, agree to disagree, absolutely. Yeah. Action! Uh, I found you. What's up guys? Welcome back to Ride with Bean. Today I am back here in uh, Antip with my two good friends, Natasha and Leth. And uh, today is kind of a bit of a sad day and a strange day. It today is, is the end of my sort of year of travel. And uh, I figured, why not end it kind of where I began it? <laughs> like uh, this whole year started here in Antib uh, when I came here and, uh, and met Laerte and got to know Natasha. And uh, now that I've reached the end of my, my year and I have to go back to Norway for work and to make more money so I can keep traveling, I figured uh, why not sit down with these guys and uh, sum up the year. A lot has happened this year. A lot has happened, especially for you, Kenneth. Yes. <laughs> so this is gonna be an interview from us <laughs> to you instead yes. of the opposite, like before. <laughs> so we talked a bit when uh, Kenneth came back, came back, and we figured it would be a good idea to uh, make you uh, know him better, a little bit in the way that we know him. If you don't. So we came up with a couple of questions. Actually, Lai came up with a couple of questions. <laughs> I'm totally in improvisation. And uh, we're going to ask you uh, those questions. And uh, we're going to go on a journey now with this video on uh, Kenneth and Kenneth's uh, story and wonders. <laughs> so, oh, okay. Lai, what was the first uh, question you wanted to I ask? I would like to start from the beginning with you. So I would like to ask you, where are you born? How was your childhood and how you spent the first year of your life? Oh, okay. <laughs> well, uh, I was born in Trondheim, Norway. And uh, yeah, very boring place, kind of. Lots of history, beautiful forests and uh, nature, but not the most exciting place. So I've always had sort of a wanderlust, always loved traveling. You start and, uh, soon, early? To to travel. Uh, as a kid, I just went to Spain and stuff like this with the family. But so your parents traveled a lot with you? Not a lot with me, but on holidays. Okay. And then, uh, but I've always had wanted to go around the world. And when I was 24, I finally, finally managed to start backpacking around the world. Okay. And, uh, I got okay, to okay. travel back. But wait, because we're jumping here. Let's go back still to your childhood. <laughs> because I think a lot of your travel desire might come also from there. So you said you're born in Norway. It's a wonderful place. We all know um, a lot of nature. Um, how was it growing up with uh, your parents? Uh, are you an only child? I'm a semi-only child. <laughs> semi-only child? I have a half-brother. Okay. I grew up with my dad and I grew up with my mom. Kind so of. your parents are separate? Yeah. In an early age? Well, yeah, before I can remember. I was two or something. Yeah. So it's not something that affected you? Nah. But you grew up like jumping from one place to another? Well, yeah, I like, spent weekends as a kid with my dad and uh, the rest of the time with my mom, kind of, or every other weekend. Okay. Like a normal. Uh, so already in movement? Yeah. Uh, yeah. My dad has always loved traveling and been, uh, as a police officer, he was like been around the world. Okay. And, uh, and my mom and my grandma, grandpa, grandparents always loved traveling, told me stories about road tripping around Europe when I was a kid and stuff. Okay. So I guess that's where it started. Uh, so it's really in your family, in your blood, since a young age. Well, I'm a, uh, I took a DNA test. I'm 99% Viking, so a Scandinavian. So, so I guess that's nomads, means, uh, <laughs> like, uh, and nomads. We are in nomads, guys. Not it's uh, very Not yeah. poetical. <laughs> Okay, okay. So you have positive memories about yeah. your childhood in general? Right? Mostly. All right. Still going back to your, let's say, early age, young age, uh, which experience you passed through on your 20s? Which formative and work experience? Where did you live? Well, in my 20s, I, I started, well, when I was 19, I went in the, uh, in the military. When okay. I was 18, I moved to Spain to go to school. Okay. 19, I went in the military and then uh, after that, I uh, basically was just working. Uh, I studied university actually, but I failed three times. What did you study? 
first I started um, uh, tourism management at a university in Spain, okay. but that went bankrupt and uh, everything went to shit. Okay. The, the, what? The university? The went university bankrupt. went bankrupt. Corruption in Spain. Okay. <laughs> and so uh, that didn't happen and I moved back to Norway. Did, uh, I started university there, but I failed math okay. three times and I just gave up. Kind of a you. paradox for a scientific uh, <laughs> mind like I you. I was the same for me. Yeah, but, uh, exactly the same. And then uh, I tried again, but uh, yeah, it didn't work. And I decided, ah, this is work. And I started saving money for traveling. So... Where have you been? Yeah, with, with, uh, with the military. Have you been traveling? Have you been moving? No, just... Uh, just in Spain? No, just in Norway? Just in Norway, yeah. Okay. And what comes to me is that uh, basically you never find your way in uh, studies. No. So you're kind <laughs> of like a, a defect in the system, like uh, you are not uh, successful in that aspect. But however, um, you created your own business. Well, I don't know about, yeah, kind of, sort of. So can you tell us more about your roasting beans business, your coffee business? That is actually your biggest passion. So. Oh, yes. yeah. It's, so it's important. Uh, it, it just, my, my interest in coffee started just randomly because I got a job at a hotel that had a coffee bar. And okay. I just ended up spending a lot of time in the coffee bar. So that was after it. you failed at university back in Norway. You don't really know what to do with your life and you kind of find this job, right? Yeah, kind of. And after, yeah. And then... Um, yeah, I just I, I had a lot of spare time at work, okay. <laughs> and I just thought it was fun to make coffee. Yeah. And then I got hooked, and uh, I learned more, wanted to learn more and more, and I got more jobs within coffee, and uh, and then I got offered a position of a roaster for a local company. Okay. Uh, right when uh, they were about to open a new coffee shop. Okay. And I became part of the team there, and we opened a. Opened our own coffee shop in Trondheim, roastery and coffee shop, and uh, ran that for five years, six years, until it went bankrupt in 2020. Okay, <laughs> but did you like this? Uh, yeah, uh, I, I love like love working in the love working in the coffee industry and uh, and all this, but just a lot of work, a lot yeah. of work, and especially since you're running your own shop, kind of. It's uh, especially for a self-taught like you. Yeah. But um, but coffee still is now like uh, one of your biggest uh, passion. You yeah. <laughs> uh, always uh, go around finding and looking for the best uh, coffee place and coffee shop. Like how coffee came to you as uh, so important, and how did it affect you in positive way or negative way in your life? Well, I, I, actually, it just happened randomly, and uh, I just learned by being behind the bar. That's well, since I'm I've always been a very shy and introverted person person, but uh, with coffee, I have there's like a barrier between between you. You have something to start a conversation about. And so I learned by being behind the bar and get, getting to talk to thousands of different people from everywhere. That's like it's a really good conversation starter. And you, and it's interesting. Everyone has a, a relationship to coffee somehow. Yeah, that's true. We're Even if they don't drink it, they have a relationship then. So it's a very good <laughs> conversation starter. That's true. That's true. So you said you were very introverts, right? As a person. Yeah. That, did the camera help you with that in your life? Yeah, actually, yeah. I started the YouTube channel originally just because me and my girlfriend at the time wanted to find a way to get out of our comfort zone, try mm -hmm. to push ourselves a little bit. And both of us were kind of shy and introverted. So we figured starting a YouTube channel is the most uncomfortable thing we can do. So that's what we did. And, uh, it tricked your brain in a way. Yeah, so we sort of forced ourselves to be uncomfortable <laughs> a little bit. Okay. And like after getting rid of the first sort of scary bits of it, it has sort of given me a bunch of new experiences that I wouldn't have otherwise. Like it gives me an excuse to go somewhere and because I should film it. Yeah. If I didn't have the camera, I wouldn't go there. I would just talk myself out of it. And so it helps me, in a way, do stuff. So it's been an uh, inspiration or like a motivation for you, this uh, behind the camera thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
Does the coffee was always part of your initial plan, even when you started the YouTube channel with uh, your girlfriend at the time? Yeah, so we started it with uh, three main uh, ideas. Okay. Like, we wanted adventure and traveling and exper exploring our own comfort zones. Okay. But we both loved coffee, me a bit more than her. <laughs> and um, she, well, I, I was riding a motorcycle and she was uh, about to take her license and loved being on the back of the motorcycle. So we sort of figured we, we would use the motorcycle to get to places, use coffee to get to know people and just enjoy wherever we go. And, and so that's how we sort of ride the bean, riding the motorcycle, using the coffee bean to meet people and get to know people. That's a and, uh, very nice project. Yeah. And uh, okay, so a lot of things happened. You've been to a lot of places because as you said, it's, uh, it's the end of your trip today. Um, can you tell us more about the whole process? Like, okay, when you started until now, what happened? Oh yeah, so this, this trip started kind of with uh, me and my girlfriend planning to go North Cape to Cape Town. By motorcycle. Okay. Uh, so that was we spent a year of, of planning and organizing and everything uh, to, to, to get that done. And then when we started, the day we started, we reached the North Cape, and then we had our big accidents. Whoa. And well, you know everything that followed. The so hospital. You want to talk about? Oh well, yeah, the everything. Uh, yeah. Well, it, there was a bridge missing. Um, and we both ended up in the river and had to be rescued by helicopter. I spent three days in coma, three surgeries, weeks in the hospital and months of rehabilitation. And everything kind of changed. So our initial plan and excitement about going to Africa kind of changed. Uh, and she changed uh, a little bit. She didn't really find the passion anymore and the interest anymore. And after a lot of things happened, she decided that she didn't want to come on the trip. So she left me. And then uh, just a very short while after that, she decided to end her life. And I was sort of stuck and I didn't know what to do or... Yeah. Yeah, because you all started it together. Yeah, so we started it together. And uh, I, I, that was kind of the, the passion, the interest, and what made it fun was to do it together. And so now I didn't know what to do, if I should just shut it down or what I would do. It's, uh, it's very uh, intense because um, it's a project that you've been carrying with, uh, with her, your girlfriend, that you loved a lot. And after having uh, this uh, huge accident that you almost lost your life on, uh, you also losing your girlfriend, um, and uh, this whole project could have totally go to waste, like totally just abort. But uh, what what pushed you after this to basically continue with it, like go for it? I kind of had two choices. I could either do the same thing as she did, which is what I wanted. I just didn't want to continue at all. But or or I could um, just see what happens tomorrow. And that's basically what I chose. Oh, I, I always have the other option. So let's just see what happens tomorrow. And I decided to keep going with the YouTube channel and just see what happens, basically. I had already done a lot of the preparation. I had sold my house, or apartment, and, uh, and had all the equipment. I was sort of ready to go. We had started the, the journey before the accident and everything. And so I just figured, at the time when I started, the borders were still closed in Africa and everything. And I, I was unsure where I would be able to go or anything like this. So I just decided to get on the bike and head south and just see what happens. And so uh, I, I just got on the bike with an open mind and in, a, in an attempt, I guess, to find myself again, find a purpose, find a reason to continue, find something. I don't know. How do you deal with that every day? How is your relationship with this sorrow, I would say? Where did you find, where do you find the power and the strength to? I don't find it. I just ignore everything, basically. But I try to keep my brain occupied because as soon as it's 
it's quiet around me then not everything comes back and I don't want to continue I don't want to do anything so I need to stay occupied all the time but uh, yeah would you say that uh, uh, even after this trip so it's been one year now you still have the same relationship to this sorrow like you still have the same okay I avoid it and and I just continue blindly or would you say that something changed inside of you after this travel something has changed but I also feel the same way okay it's just uh, I kind of feel the same emptiness when I'm alone and doing the same things as I used to do then the same feelings come back but uh, I've met so many people and heard so many stories on this journey that I'm sort of able to reflect in a different way. So I, I, I know how I'm feeling and I'm, I can't really do much about that. No matter what I try or how much I try, those feelings just don't go away. It is how I feel, always, all day, uh, every day. But I'm, I'm sort of, I use the stories that I've heard and the people that I've met to sort of put my life into perspective and realize how incredibly lucky that I actually am. Because a lot of people are struggling with things. Everyone has their issues, their stories. But uh, I've been able to actually travel for a whole year. I met hundreds of interesting people. And, and I'm, so I, I know how lucky I am. And not everyone gets to do this. And so I should appreciate this. So I try. So now you feel maybe a little bit happier, would you say? Happier? I'm not sure. I don't really know what that happiness is. But Let's uh, say for me in a sense, like as before you were mostly during one day sad and depressed. Now you can find yourself smiling or something that you find touching more in the day or expecting something more out of your day being more excited than you used to be, you know, in a way. I, not really. I no? feel less excitement. <laughs> less excitement? Yeah. So even after this travel, you feel less excitement? I feel less excitement. But uh, so everything I do every day is just basically to get to tonight or to... To pass I the just, day. Yeah, to pass the day. So I try to keep myself occupied as much as I can each day. So you are still on your travel? Yeah, kind of. But now I'm sort of... I'm starting to make future plans because this whole journey was I just jumped on the bike to see what happens. Yeah. Now I've seen what happens for Now a year. you want to go deeper, there you go. Now I, I, at least I'm trying to plan forward and try to yeah, look forward a little bit instead okay. of just being stuck in, in one day. So I take it each day as it comes but with a longer plan if you, if you get me. Okay, um, I just want to go back to one thing got uh, my attention because if we follow all of your story now and after what you said your your old journey started with um, your girlfriend uh, what like a while ago but when you started this video you said uh, this journey started here and you wanted to finish it here can you explain that statement well yeah uh, when I started the whole the, the trip in Norway that was the plan was to just go south and see what happens and um, yeah, I, 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 like I said, I didn't have any plans and then randomly Jonathan uh, messaged me that he had a couch and I stayed there for a couple of days and when I came back uh, we had sort of planned on going for a trip together on a trip together and um, but he was waiting for his motorcycle and so I was just spending the time waiting for him to get his motorcycle uh, so the trip could actually start because on the way from Norway down here that was basically just a transport because I needed to get my bike down here before winter so that I could keep riding through winter and then I had to go home to so work. all of Concours, Circonstance yeah so sort of January 1st is when like that everything started for real and that was here in France but since I had to wait I was just driving around willy-nilly up in the mountains here and I wanted a coffee one day and, and you found nomads. I found nomads, <laughs> you guys. And I it's like, it's biblical here. We are on the level of like a magical <laughs> thing happening, you know, like the Viking blood test DNA. 
uh, being a nomad, finding his way to a coffee shop called Nomad, where there is in the city <laughs> the Nomad statue, where we're finishing the interview of the end of the travel here. And so, sorry, here yeah. you came here and what Yeah, happened? so I, I came here and got to know you guys and uh, stayed here for a month. And so this is sort of where, where I sort of, well, it was a decisive change for you. Yeah, because of the, the time I spent here, that sort of changed the whole trip and everything that happened. Do you believe in destiny or for you? Was no. just, yeah. just one. It was you just random. Yes. <laughs> Are yeah. you religious? Do you believe no. in something? <laughs> no, I'm very far from religious. So, as far as, remember as, earlier, as far I, I had to ask you that. What you <laughs> I did a little oh, inside yes, joke saying uh, the scientific mind failed the math. <laughs> so one of our first interaction with Kenneth, actually, I was coming back from Lyon, like he told me about this guy, amazing, staying in the backpacker, it was Kenneth from nowhere, traveling with his motorcycle. <laughs> so I come back and have a chat with him and instantly we connected, like we start chatting very naturally. And uh, I am very, very much of a spiritual, like highly spiritual. Uh, I believe in, in destiny, but in, in a lot of like a karma and universe. And he is quite of a rational mind, very much into like the reality of the things, the science, <laughs> the methodology, the, you know, what's concrete and is uh, more of a sceptical. Uh, however, we always uh, got around it and got along with each other. Well, you can still have good conversations even if you disagree. Absolutely, That's we can uh, agree to disagree, absolutely. Yeah. So we often agree to disagree on that subject. <laughs> so sometimes we avoid even talking about it. But uh, for me, it feels uh, very much like this and it brought you in our way. Because for you, it's a journey. For us, it was also something to meet you. It changed drastically something for us, in us, uh, in our career, in our path of life, you know. Uh, so that's why I was doing this very, it's very magical, biblical <laughs> type of moment. For me, it, it's like this. And, uh, and I think in a certain extent, without the mystical aspect, for you, it was also very emotionally touching. Something happened for you when you came here. Yeah. And you started maybe your travel with a yeah, well, new adventurous. Meeting you guys was very important. Like, because we, all of us kind of share a similar story and well, we're all nomads and love to travel and yeah. love to meet you people. You can refer to the video we did a couple months ago. <laughs> the interview, Coffee uh, Between Friends. Yeah. Go back to it. Uh, he will put, put the episode here, somewhere around our head. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, so, yeah, yeah. And then, but then also, all the people that I met in the hostel. Because like, a hostel has people go coming through all Absolutely. the time. Absolutely. And you meet all it's kinds of travel different travel without traveling. Yeah. That was Xander the person. Zander, yeah. South African. <laughs> yeah, your plan was to go to South Africa. Yeah. Like maybe, to to maybe I still will. Ooh. I still want to. It's you just, should. Uh, now yeah, you have And you just need more money. To, <laughs> so now I'm out. So spent, that's uh, a good point. Yeah. Um, yeah, all of this has been an amazing adventure. Came here, met us, uh, went into a wonderful journey with Jonathan. Uh, but you say, you said you have um, plans for the future. So, um, how do you see now uh, what's going to happen for you? What do you want to do? What are you planning? Well, uh, I've, I've realized my, my hope uh, for this year was that I would be able to grow my channel enough so that I can keep traveling. Uh, my goal is never to be rich. I just want to be able to make enough to keep traveling. But I didn't reach that goal, so now I have to go back to, to work wow. to save up more money so I can keep traveling. You uh, want to work on your channel as well. Like yeah, and so while I'm while I'm back now, I have I'm, I'm making a few changes because I need to do something different on the channel. I don't know exactly what. Uh, I'm still learning. I'm I'm a retard when it comes to uh, electronics and cameras, and I don't really understand it. But it's interesting. So I, I I need to spend this time now learning how to better use things and be more creative. And um, when I come back, uh, I'm heading east, and then I guess see what happens again. Okay. But this time I want to tra travel with a bit more plan, because now this year was completely random, and I, and I realized that it is very tiring to travel randomly, because not knowing which direction or where you're going every single day, 
it, it makes everything more tiring, I, I, I found. I'm really happy that I've done this for a year, but now I want to try a different approach. Okay. You want to change the content a bit? No, not the content. I still want to do the same things, but just try to do it in a different way. So you would say, obviously you still want to travel, that's established. Uh, do, you, do you still want to keep the coffee inside of yes. your channel in some way? Well, coffee is, will always be a part of it, but uh, the, I've realized that the nerdy coffee content maybe should go uh, on a separate and a channel. Separate channel. Yeah. Because uh, I've realized that m most motorcyclists are not as coffee nerdy as I am, yeah. and so. So, but it's it's exciting because it's a lot of new perspectives. So obviously, the perspective of traveling is always exciting. You also have this uh, very good challenge for yourself of getting around the whole technology thing and and Instagram and all of this. Yeah. That I'm, a, I'm a slow learner, but I'm trying. <laughs> Uh, Let's see what but I think that also with your travel, the people you meet, uh, you can meet people that will help you to improve in those aspects. Yeah, well, a challenge is always an opportunity to uh, learn from other people. So that's an exciting yeah. perspective. And uh, growing the coffee business, do you ever want to do something again into like uh, maybe having a company with coffee or a bar? Yeah, I, I love working in the coffee industry. I just, uh, I don't know exactly what I will be doing, but I think I will work in coffee in some capacity for a long time. Okay. Uh, so cool. good. Are you happy? Looking forward now? I don't want to go back. I really don't want to stop traveling because now I want to just keep going. Mm -hmm. But because of, uh, well, because of the accident that happened in Italy, oh, and, yeah, you had another accident. So. Yeah, because of that, everything got delayed and things had to change again and now winter is here and yeah well I'm out of money so I, I think something has to change and I think this is a good time to sort of finish this first part of my trip and sort of reflect on everything I've learned all the people I've met all the experiences I've had yeah we'll see it's cool it's like now you're having a break yeah. and it's a, a total new beginning when you start again new plan, new opportunity, some changements in the channel apparently guys, looking forward to it. Do you want to tell us which, uh, which one are the most incredible experience you passed through this year and also if you got into some troubles? Most interesting experience? Uh, there's been a lot. Well, coming here was probably the biggest, yeah. biggest experience and meeting you guys and meeting Jonathan. That was the two biggest experiences, I think, because they led to so many other experiences. Me meeting you guys, you took me around, showed me the whole of this area, and that. You can also check that out in all the video <laughs> that we made previously. And uh, yeah, meeting Jonathan and getting to see all of Spain and, uh, and Portugal and all of this. That was you really awesome. You can also check that out in the previous video. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I think meeting people in general has, is the biggest what, what has made the biggest impression on me but um, the biggest so, the best experience has been meeting Jonathan and meeting us yeah I think so. and uh, how was it when you had the crossover and then Jonathan met us and we met Jonathan <laughs> well, that's pretty cool that's like a, a meeting of uh, <laughs> the two universe yeah but that, that's why I lo love traveling too because like, you meet new people and become friends and then they introduce you to their friends and then you suddenly know more people and more coffee to be shared <laughs> exactly <laughs> because sharing is caring uh, any any trouble the worst yeah. now worst uh, worst experience uh, probably being attacked on new year's eve when That's i was true. beat up in uh, in salon de provence <laughs> by a mob how was that was uh yeah it was a bit a bit, a bit scary but I, I kind of learned a lot from it. I learned not to be so naive. I learned that coming from Norway, I'm used to safe environments. I'm used to things being safe around me and not really having to worry about much. And coming here and having that happen, you it's realize, kinda... okay, I, I need to be sharp. I need to focus. I can't just be riding around willy nilly. Yeah. Yeah. So it was like a new edge to your personality, like a chop and chop and Kenneth happening. Yeah. 
I think that was the worst worst experience that I had. <laughs> but it was also interesting, so... Yeah, because in the West there is always good and it all depends on the way you take the uh, hardship in your life and we just guess this, it's better to see it as a learning and that's great that you saw it like this. So in the end, your best experience was the best experience, but your worst experience became also a good one because you learn out of it. Yes, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> if you could say something to the Kennedy in the past, what, what, what would you advise, what, what would you say now? How far in the past? Back to 10 years? 10 years, ten, ten years ago? Uh, no, don't work so much. Enjoy life more. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's pretty hard, huh? <laughs> yeah, because uh, I spent all the, most of the time in the past 10 years, I've just been working, 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 and then traveling, and working, working, working. Do you feel you lost time on that? Yeah, I, I spent 18 hours, 20 hours a day, seven days a week at work for years. And it was just the past. Yeah. But and so definitely enjoy more, experience more, and work less. Okay. Oh, but maybe also work smart. Work smarter, yeah. But also just try more. Don't be afraid. Ooh. Don't be scared of things. That is I've something realized, good. Especially after my accident, yeah. I stopped being afraid. After my accident and what happened with PI and, and everything, I lost everything I cared about within a year within half a year. So it's like nothing really matters anymore. Yeah, so I realized that nothing really matters. It, exactly, it, it doesn't matter. So especially stop people being of things. Yeah. And especially like your own connection and relationship with death at that point, it must be so different. I mean, you almost died and you lost to death someone that you love so much. So it's like, I don't even care if I die now. And you said it, right? right? So it's like, you're not afraid of dying, doing something crazy. So you're doing something crazy, realizing that like, okay, but it didn't kill me. It kind of like made me excited and make me discover something. And so exactly. you did, you have a new relationship then to adventure. Yeah, so now I'm much less afraid of just trying shit. Just go and try. So, I, the worst that can happen is is I die, and if that happens, uh, eh, so be it. I had a good life until now. Yeah, but that's quite and smart, so, you know. Like when it happened, it happened. Yeah. And until then, I have fun. I enjoy. Yeah, exactly. It. That's kind of. So I, uh, Kenneth's advice would be: <laughs> work smarter and uh, try thing. Yeah, basically, just okay. go for it. Life and is not that serious. Sure. <laughs> Why so serious? I would like to ask in, in connection with that question, um, if you could say anything to the Kenneth just after this uh, experience of your life, losing Pia, what would you tell him today? Uh, after, after losing, like when I was at the lowest after? Yes, at your lowest, lowest. Uh, basically you... the same thing. Just. Try. What, what's the worst that can happen? You always have this option of quitting tomorrow. So just see what what you can do today. Like when you when you reach tonight, you can still do what you want to do now. Like you can still kill yourself at the end of the day. Just see if you can make something out of the day. It's basically the the same. But it's also what you said yourself at the time and what led you to everything that you did today. But kind of like something new that you got from this experience something maybe comforting like because imagine yourself at I mean rethink about yourself at that stage like it was it was so painful and dark and now maybe, even if you still have those feelings um, maybe you want to yeah well say something but it is a, I kind of feel the same way it's just uh, I would tell myself to to well waste less time and try to be more productive and because being productive it, it equals new experiences. Equals feeling better. Feeling better is kind of, I don't really, the way I feel doesn't really change. Even on the moment, particular moment where you're doing something new, you're still having those feelings? Yeah, even when I'm on the bike, like doing what I really enjoy doing, I'm not really enjoy, enjoying it. So, okay. I'm, I'm, but I'm, I, I'm enjoying it, but I'm not really enjoying it in a way and so every moment everything i do is just to get to the next moment okay and uh, yeah so there is still some uh, again traveling to do on that aspect yeah i guess
So that's also sticking to the future plan. <laughs> it's uh, you're gonna go along the whole candid journey uh, in travel, coffee, and its whole healing process in a way. I just basically see what happens because yeah, that, that's what life is about. Just see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> we'll see a meeting in five years. Yeah. Where are you about? Because I've, I've, I've figured out, I've realized that if you have very high expectations, it's very easy to get disappointed. However, you should always have very high hopes because the hopes are motiva motivating I, I disagree. You disagree? High, high hopes is the same as... Uh, it's the same. Uh, it's I don't know. For me, it's kind of like uh, so, like the Camino. I take this as an example. You have the the hope that you're gonna arrive to to Santiago. You have this kind of like dream in your head. Like, okay, I'm gonna go there. This is there. I'm gonna go. You know. But uh, then you came to enjoy all of the way and then you realize that uh, because you had not the expectation like, oh, I need to arrive there now, you, you like the process and arriving there is just like a, a continuing of your story. Yeah. But... Uh, <laughs> I lost myself. Uh, me, I just want to ask, when you are in your tent at night camping, and you lie down on your little mattress. What's your last thought? And if in the end of the way you feel kind of, in a way, grateful for what you have? Yeah, what definitely. You pass through the day? I, I always feel very grateful because I know how lucky I am to be able to do this and experience this. And even if I feel shitty, I feel very grateful. And well, most nights when I when I camp, I'm just exhausted. So when I, when, I, when I lay down, I don't think too much. I just try to go to sleep. But I, yeah, um, I do reflect a lot on everything that happens. So every day when I meet new people and meet, I have new experiences. At, at nights, I try to reflect on what happened, what I learned that day. What you wonder why as well? Why why that happened or you just. Not it happened. I, I, I'm not. Uh, I don't really think about why things happen because any spirit of it. Uh, <laughs> no. it doesn't really matter. It happened. So what can I learn from this? Basically, that's what I'm. Yeah. Can I grow from this experience, or can I can I change something that I believe in, or is there something that I think about? Can I look at it from a different perspective? And that's not something that changes overnight, but uh, like over weeks you sort of reflect on things and same as I'm riding my bike on long stretches I reflect on all of these things that I've seen uh, all the people I've met the conversations I've had and I try to put everything all the stories I hear into a my own perspective and then yeah, learn about myself better okay and imagine to reply to a young guy that is watching this video he wants to start something somewhere or just starting his journey or his travel. Yeah. Where would you advise him to go? Which or, places? Yes, the one who shocked you the most in a positive way. Like if someone wants just to start and say, oh, I would like to go somewhere, but I really don't know why, where or... If you want to go by motorcycle, well, at least for the parts, the, the places I've been on a motorcycle, I think Morocco. Morocco. Because that, that's the biggest change, the biggest like culture, difference and that's where you can learn the most about yourself i think okay it's very shocking in a way the, yeah kind of because the difference the, there is. the culture is very different and the, the way people behave and the way they talk to you and everything is very different so you're forced to confront your own bias your own like yeah what's the word it's more yeah. it's more challenging yeah than europe europe is kind more of challenging and uh, and the experience is just amazing. The, the landscapes are just so beautiful. What, what about the food? I'm not a foodie. <laughs> I, I just survived the food. <laughs> so the food is not a big thing for me. All right. <laughs> the food, the uh, complicated. And the coffee, Morocco? It's shitty. They have they, their own way to make it, right? Kind no, of. They, they, they mostly make espressos. Yeah. Like in, it, in, like in Italy. The real one. Actually, and yeah. <laughs> But, but the coffee friend. is mostly crap, <laughs> not a lot of good coffee. 
But there's a lot of coffee. Coffee is a big part in Mostly Morocco, tea, Moroccan think, culture. Huh? But yeah, tea is tea is better. Um, like uh, we were talking about the, the expectation and the hopes. He said it's pretty much the same thing. Yeah. But in a sense, the way I was seeing it is um, the hopes kind of keep you going, meaning gives you a gives you like a destination to go to. Even if you don't go there, at least you move somewhere. When expectation is like, I expect that that day very precisely and that it leads to disappointments. Oh yeah. I don't really look at it that way. I kind of look at it like... The same. Yeah, I, I don't really hope for things because every time I really, really hope for things, it, it falls through and it just ends up disappointing me and I should just end up in the... So, okay. And so I just, I, I feel it's better to not expect anything and not hope for anything. Like wanting to something to happen. So yeah, I would like to go there and see this. But I'm not disappointed or sad if it doesn't happen or if things change. I'm always open to new possibilities because, okay. like, going if I, if I want to go to to the Italy to see the Dolomites, hmm. like that's my goal. I have a, I have a yeah. But you have no picture of it. It's like yeah, okay, it's I like, go there. I'm, I'm gonna go there, and that's that's the idea. That's what I'm doing. But then halfway, I can, maybe I meet someone, and that invites me to go do something else, and. If I sort of have my really high hopes set on going to the Dolomites, I might miss out on, on that. Okay. <laughs> and so, so I feel... But in a way open. you said that you want to plan a bit more what you want to do in the future, right? So uh, yeah. at some point you will have to deal with that and maybe just say, okay, you have to make a choice. I'm going to have to write yeah. anyway. So, so I, I basically, I, I like to take things as they come and just see what happens and not plan too much. So now it's going exactly totally against what you usually like to do. Yeah, so, but I also realized that it's like some, some planning is good because it helps you be more organized and, and use your time better. Yeah, like productivity wise, yeah. efficiency. But I don't really want to plan in detail. I just plan one thing and I'm free. I, keep, I leave as much time as I want free in between those two things. But then I ha at least have a direction to go. Okay, so then it's very similar to my conception. Yeah. Except that, okay, maybe we disagree on the vocabulary, but uh, it's kind of like you're hoping for something and then whatever happens, happens. In my mind, it's like Yeah, this. well, yeah, I guess sort of, kind of. Sort of, kind of. <laughs> we will agree on that. I, 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 take, I give that to you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So um, that, was a, that was a nice uh, question facts. Anyway, guys. I think we went uh, around uh, the subject. Yeah. But if you liked it, because I know you will, <laughs> and you want to know more, and you have more questions because our minds are limited right now, you know, you can still ask him in the comments and maybe he can do another uh, question answer video. Yeah. QA. Well, I will be coming back here uh, when I start my, my journey. So uh, we'll uh, we'll have to have a, a chat then. Yes. And a coffee. Definitely. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. It was a bit spontaneous and uh, random, but if you did, yeah. give me a thumbs up, click subscribe, <laughs> and ring the bell if you want to see uh, what happens next. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. Yes. Whatever, what happened then? What I have to say. Yeah, Peace. Yeah. We hope. Uh, Peace. Good luck. <laughs> yeah. This. Satisfied? Yeah. It's good. good. Well, well, what about you guys? What has happened at the uh, Backpackers <laughs> lately in the last uh, <laughs> year? I was not expected. Uh, <laughs> actually it's like it's like the reverse, I, reverse I at, so the so finish, so we... <laughs> at the Uno. At the Uno. Well, uh, f renovation project happening. It's a bit of a um, uh, organized chaos because I am an organized chaos. <laughs> In the way of getting better. Since uh, last time we had a uh, coffee chats, a lot of things has changed. Has it was changed? Ma no, in June. When was? It? No, it wasn't June in June. March. It was uh, snow outside. It was when we no, had the painting. February or something. No, I think February. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It no, was my uh, concept of time after the, the season. <laughs> fucked up. So yeah, a lot of things happened. Uh, personally, I had a lot of breakthrough. 
we change a lot of things in the backpacker. We have uh, amazing new volunteers that we love so much and that are helping us so much every day to improve and like in terms of backpacker improve in so many levels and feels more like home you know and in terms of a personal level like improving our, ourselves you know like opening our minds to different aspects of the world and us and perspective we've been chatting a lot about our project for the future <laughs> uh, we've been now living a while together. That's <laughs> one year. How's that going? Hola. <laughs> it's doing okay. We are, we are very is, different. I would say good. Uh, we are very are, different. It's a bit of a roller coaster. Yeah, saying? it's a roller yeah. coaster. So, like he's, like always, I mean. Yeah, yeah. But you have some good, uh, some interesting news, don't you? Should you I? Just, <laughs> 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 yes, I do have some interesting news. Uh, but that, Don't uh, say that for better. Yeah, it's no, no, no. I should not say <laughs> now. Maybe you can tell us uh, when, uh, when, you, when come back. you come back. <laughs> Whenever you come back. But uh, yeah, life has been good. I met an amazing person. And uh, right now I'm going on a one month trip in South Africa. That's Very cool. exciting. Mm -hmm gonna go around Johannesburg and then go down to Ladysmith, Durban, Cape Town. So, nice. new things to see. I'm looking forward. I'm looking forward to have a break as well. <laughs> <laughs> and then when I come back, he's coming with me. So it's gonna be a new adventure because we're gonna leave all of three together in a 20 meter square <laughs> apartment with only one room, guys. We'll see, we'll see. Separated with the hostel is still there anyway. It's not gonna move in. So. <laughs> but, uh, it's gonna yeah. be interesting. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun. New well, things happening. That's this good. city, summer and winter, is completely two phases, of, two phases of the same metal. It's, yeah. it's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, I'm not looking forward to going home to the snow now. Uh, <laughs> I imagine. Yeah. I don't envy you. <laughs> but it can, it's going to lead to new, new adventures, so it's worth it. Yes, yes. Oh, maybe you know what we should do next time? We should show you some firefighting, fire show action oh, yeah. <laughs> for your video. Well, cool. I guess... Uh, One hour. That's it. Yeah, enough, enough. <laughs> Sun is going down. Yeah, it's getting cold. It's getting cold. <laughs> I'm actually yeah. freezing. <laughs> there is a Viking with, with a t-shirt. Oh my god. <laughs> Guys, let me tell you, it's, it's cold outside. But anyway. Alright, let's uh, Ale. go inside and... Uh, <laughs> and say... Choose!